Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone from all over the world, and welcome to our webinar titled Telemetry 101. This webinar has been sponsored by AD Instruments, so a big thank you to them for helping to make this event possible. Joining us today, we're very fortunate to have Dr. Phil Griffiths, a training and support specialist at AD Instruments in Europe. His presentation will highlight a number of common applications of the AD Instruments small animal telemetry systems and showcase some exciting publications from existing users. All right, so I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Phil Griffiths to the floor. Phil, thank you so much for joining us today and the floor is yours whenever you're ready. Great, thank you very much. Okay, hi everybody. Thank you for, for joining us today. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about the uh, new small animal tele telemetry system uh, from AD Instruments uh, today. So just to give you a little bit of um, information about me, uh, I've got a BSc and PhD in neuroscience from the University of Bristol in the UK, uh, where I've also uh, had four and a half years postdoc experience uh, using a telemetry system to record arterial blood pressure from rats. Uh, in 2019, I joined Caja Sciences uh, to work as a telemetry application specialist in Europe, um, uh, before I moved in February of this year to work for ADI. Um, and I'm uh, currently uh, as a training and technical support specialist in the European team. Um, <clears throat> just to give an overview of what we're gonna talk about today, uh, we'll first look at uh, why you might use telemetry uh, and some of the alternatives to telemetry that are available, perhaps the, the traditional techniques that you might uh, think of. Uh, we'll look at some of the uh, specific details about the, the telemetry system from AD Instruments um, and the advantages of it as well and how it integrates with the uh, existing AD Instruments data acquisition um, system, the Power Lab and Lab Chart. Um, the, the telemetry system can be broken down into a rat system and a mouse system. So we'll look at those independently of each other. Uh, and then finally, we'll, we'll work, work through some, some research applications and showcase some, some exciting publications from, from customers. So to give you um, some background, uh, the, the telemetry system I'm talking about today is the Caja Sciences telemetry system. And this isn't new technology. It's been around for about 15 years and was first sold under the brand of <clears throat> telemetry research uh, before it was purchased by Miller in 2014. Miller carried out a lot of um, product improvements and introduced a few new products and features and things as well um, before the, the, the brand was changed again to Caja Sciences in 2017. Uh, AD Instruments purchased Kaha in February 2021, so um, it's a, a really exciting matchup now between between the telemetry technology of Kaha Sciences and the existing data acquisition um, uh, technology from AD Instruments. So Kaha Sciences is now an AD Instruments brand. Uh, and with the Caja Sciences telemetry systems, you can measure a range of physiological parameters, whether they're cardiovascular parameters, um, uh, cardiovascular pressures or other physiological pressures, um, sympathetic nerve activity. Uh, there's a unique tissue oxygen telemeter as well. Um, and as I've said, the, the systems are broken down into a rat system and the mouse system. At the moment, the mouse system is biopotential only. So the, both the rat and the mouse systems offer biopotential recording and the rat system offers the, the pressure uh, recording. So um, just to, to kick off the presentation um, a, a, a bit more, what are some of the alternatives to, to recording with telemetry? Uh, so uh, these can be broken down into acute recordings, the first of which I would consider the invasive recordings and anaesthetized animals. Uh, and these are one-off measurements. Uh, so you carry out your experiments maybe over the course of a day. Um, and then at the end of the experiment, the animal's cold um, and, um, and that's the end of the experiment. Um, with these experiments, you can collect uh, high frequency uh, data uh, with high fidel fidelity sampling. 
Uh, and your recording time is usually sort of a few minutes to, to perhaps a few hours, uh, and it's continuous waveform data. So these kind of studies, uh, uh, acute blood pressure recordings maybe, or um, something like a PV loop study. Um, and it, uh, it's uh, with the, the Miller catheters um, or some sort of, sort of uh, uh, in vivo uh, anesthetized neuroscience recording from the brain. Uh, these studies uh, are really valuable, um, but you have to bear in mind the, the effect of the anesthesia on your, your physiological data that you're collecting. And as I've said, you're, you're only collecting uh, data from the animal over the course of one day. Um, uh, and then you have to repeat the experiment in another animal. So you'll find that you have to have quite a large uh, sample uh, of, of animals before you, you're getting uh, statistically significant data often. Um, another example of acute measurements are uh, non-invasive me measurements like non-invasive uh, non uh, blood pressure using tail cloth plethysmography is a good example of this. And these are usually one-off or periodically repeated experiments. Uh, and they are quite time consuming. It involves quite a lot of training of the animals, uh, particularly with the um, NIBP to, to sit uh, within this tube. Um, and the recording time is usually limited to a few minutes uh, and it's non-continuous data. So rather than a waveform data uh, that you'd collect, uh, otherwise you'd, you're maybe getting one or two blood pressure values out for the, for the recording time. So these are quite valuable for screening uh, large numbers of animals or a colony of animals to make sure that you're, uh, it's either a, a colony where you might want them to be expressing hypertension or to checking whether hypertension is developing in, in that colony over time. Um, but it's quite difficult to collect sort of publishable data with these systems, I think, because um, of the amount of training and, and time that, that's involved in using these systems. Um, the final uh, example uh, uh, that's not telemetry that I'm going to give today is is the example of tethering. So this is where you might, uh, these are chronic experiments where you might implant your electrode or your blood pressure catheter in the animal and then externalize it at the shoulder blades often and then connect it via a tether to an external uh, transducer or amplifier. Um, a lot of uh, evidence over time has shown that these studies restrict the movement of the animals uh, during recording, uh, leading to altered behavior and perhaps changes in your physiological activity of the animal as well. And they can be quite prone to infection where you externalize the, the electrode leads or the, the catheter uh, through the skin. <clears throat> They're also prone to, to movement artifacts and noise where the, the tether is, is a big aerial, basically picking up environmental uh, electrical noise and is also moving around uh, and can, can influence the data. Um, recording time with this is, is perhaps up to a few hours a day and can repeat, be repeated over a few days or weeks if you're lucky that your, your signal is maintained. Um, but a researcher has to be present throughout all of those recordings uh, and watching that, that animal um, and, and during all of that time. So that, again, they're quite time consuming. What telemetry offers you is the ability to perform uh, conscious, unrestrained um, data collection, physiological data collection from your research animals. Uh, telemeters are fully implantable, so they're less prone to infection. Um, uh, and after a short surgical procedure, the animals recover uh, to behave pretty, uh, to, to behave normally um, and uh, unencumbered by the, by the telemetry device. Uh, there's minimal day-to-day -day maintenance. Um, there's no need for, for researchers to sit there watching the animals while they're recording, uh, maybe say for going in once or twice a day to, to make sure the system is, is recording as you would expect it to be. Um, and the data is, is coming through like you would expect. Uh, and you can have multiple animals running simultaneously. So when I was using the system as a researcher, I would have, I would implant uh, rats in groups of four so that I would have up to, to eight animals running simultaneously. So a group of four in a control group and a group of four in an experimental group. So you can get quite a high throughput going for your experiments as well. With telemetry, you can run long-term recordings um, over weeks and perhaps months. 
And this helps you to collect, um, capture long-term variation in physiological parameters uh, for aging studies, perhaps, or to look at disease progression over time. Uh, and although telemetry systems can uh, come with quite a significant cost at the beginning, over time, uh, they do actually allow you to reduce your costs because of the quality of data that you can collect with telemetry systems and the possibility of doing within animal controls. You can have fewer uh, animals required per group. Uh, to give you higher statistical power. Uh, and you can also reduce the staff maintenance. As I've said, you, you can free up staff time to, to perform other activities like data analysis or other experimental work while the animals are recording. Okay, so to, to move on and talk more specifically about the Kaha Sciences telemetry system for many instruments, um, as I've said, it's broken down into a wrap telemetry system and a mouse telemetry system. The rat telemetry system comprises the TR181 smart pads, uh, which are the data receivers for the TRM5 and TR5 series rat telemeters. Uh, the mouse telemetry system is it comprises the MT110 T bases, which are the data receivers for the MT10B single uh, biopotential mouse telemeters. Uh, the smart pads and the T bases also act as uh, wireless power devices to, to provide power to the telemeters. Um, and I'll explain what this means uh, and what this means for, for data collection uh, in the next slide. Common to both systems is the TR190 configurator system, which is the small box that you can see over to the left hand side of, of both um, diagrams. And um, this system allows full software control of the telemetry uh, hardware uh, to reduce the impact of handling and stress uh, on your animals. So you don't need to handle the animals in order to set up the system. Uh, and is actually a really nice system and makes the, the telemetry system really easy to set up and use. Uh, then you also need your power lab and lab chart for, for data acquisition, data capture and data analysis. So I've mentioned that the smart pad and the T-Base generate wireless power. Uh, so what does that actually mean for the telemetry system? Well, the, they uh, use electricity to generate a magnetic wireless power field, which passes through the cage base and the skin of the animal uh, and is picked up by the telemeter uh, and converted back into electricity uh, to, to power the telemeter electronics. So what this means is that that while you're recording from your animals in the home cage, there's actually continuous power available to the telemeters. Um, and this removes the experimental limitation of battery life. So compared to other telemetry systems where you're constantly having to manage the battery life uh, and, and how much longer you've got left of recording uh, with that particular telemeter, with the Kaha Sciences telemetry system, you don't need to worry about that. Um, the the uh, during home cage recording, the, the telemeters are powered continuously, uh, and this opens up the possibility of really, uh, well, continuous recording, firstly, uh, and being able to capture lots of spontaneous physiological activity, um, but also long-term recording um, for, for um, monitoring physiological parameters over a really long period of time. It also removes the need for, for refurbishing telemeters. So the rat telemeters can actually be explanted uh, from the animal and reused. Um, uh, and the number of reuses depends on the application and the type of telemeter that, that uh, we're talking about. Um, and the mouse telemeters are actually designed to be used once and then disposed of uh, and priced for that as well. So the configurator system, uh, as I've mentioned, allows full software control of the uh, telemetry hardware. So the telemetry system uh, uses 40 independent transmission frequencies. So each telemeter and smart pad or T-base is paired on, on its own transmission frequency uh, to avoid crosstalk between telemeters and interference between animals. So you can be confident that the data transmitted from a telemeter is picked up by the specific smart pad or T-base that you want it to be. Um, so this is all controlled using the configurator system. Uh, and it's really easy to set up and use. And there are videos on the AD Instruments website uh, that show this as well. Um, 
The configurator system allows you also to carry out monitoring and diagnostics of the system uh, to maintain optimal recording conditions and make sure that everything's uh, working as it should be. Uh, it's worth pointing out that this is not a data acquisition system. It's not required for data acquisition. Um, it's solely for, for the control uh, and the configuration of the telemetry system. Data acquisition is provided by the PowerLab um, uh, data acquisition hardware and uh, lab chart software from AD Instruments. Uh, and there's really seamless integration with, with this data acquisition system. Uh, the SmartPad and T-Base analog outputs connect to the analog inputs of the PowerLab. And you can perform real-time data capture and analysis with uh, lab chart eight and lab chart lightning. So you can see in the video that this rat has implanted with a dual pressure telemeter measuring arterial blood pressure and left ventricular pressure. And that waveform data is being collected in real time. And we've also got an analysis channel uh, going on here, uh, take, uh, measure, uh, calculating the TPDT from the left ventricular pressure waveform. Uh, lab chart lightning is, is AD Instruments' uh, newest, um, data acquisition and analysis software, which was released last year. Um, and this is really uh, powerful for, for the telemetry uh, system moving forwards, including unlimited um, data analysis uh, or data acquisition and analysis channels, custom calculations, uh, cross recording analysis, and, and really easy data management as well. So with the amount of data that you can record with the telemetry system, um, it can be really easily managed in LabChat Lightning. Uh, LabChart 8 Pro at the moment has the uh, built-in modules for analysis of waveform data. So that's the blood pressure module, the ECG analysis module, and the heart rate variability module are just three examples of, of the modules that will be useful for um, analyzing your, your telemetry data, um, particularly for cardiovascular customers. Um, and these soon uh, will be introduced into LabChart Lightning as well. Um, uh, this is a good opportunity to introduce the PowerLab C as well, which is um, uh, a new uh, data acquisition device from AD Instruments. Um, and it provides simple, reliable, low latency connection between digital devices. So it can be combined with this instrument interface, which is sitting on top of the PowerLab C um, in this image. Um, to uh, take the outputs from the smart pads and the T-Base and take them through into LabChart. And this is really the future of AD Instruments data acquisition. So uh, watch this space for, for more information about the PowerLab C um, in the, the near future. So just to summarize uh, up to this stage of the, the, the webinar, that the um, Caja Sciences telemetry from AD Instruments uses wireless power technology to remove the experimental limitation of battery life, to allow continuous recording from your telemetry devices, but also um, uh, long-term recording as well over a, a long period of time. Um, the telemeters, uh, both the rat and the mouse telemetry system benefit from a really high sampling rate at two kilohertz for improved data accuracy. The configurator system is fully, uh, allows full software control of the telemetry hardware to reduce any impacts of, of handling um, of your animals. And there's really easy integration with the existing AD Instruments data acquisition uh, system, the PowerLab and the lab chart. So I'm going to move on now to talk um, more specifically about the rat telemetry system. <clears throat> so the rat telemeters um, uh, and the rat telemetry system offers the ability to measure pressure, um, uh, uh, physiological pressure, and that's achieved by the incorporation of the Miller microtip pressure sensors. And I'll talk a bit more about what that means for the quality and accuracy of the data, the pressure data that you collect in the next slide. The RAT telemetry system also offers co-housing mode. So that's a really important feature for improving the welfare of your animals. Um, but also, uh, and another side to it, is allowing you to customize your experiments uh, to collect the maximum amount of data from each animal that you use as well. And I'll talk a bit more about that in the upcoming slides. Uh, 
all of the RAT telemeters have uh, a backup battery, which helps to facilitate continuous recording in the home cage, but also allows sampling up to five meters away from the smart pad for between four and six hours, depending on which telemeter it is that you're using. Uh, and this is ideal for behavioral studies. So it really opens out the possibility of, of carrying out more complicated experiments, not just with the animals sitting in the home cage, but taking the animals away from the home cage as well. Um, and also all rat telemeters accurately measure core temperature and, and can report core temperature as well uh, alongside the parameters uh, advertised with each telemeter model. So I mentioned that the, um, the rat pressure telemeters incorporate the Miller microtip pressure sensor, uh, which is a solid state pressure sensor, uh, in two French diameter, which is 0.6 millimeters, uh, located at the catheter tip. And this uh, technology offers unrivaled long-term accuracy, fidelity, and reproducibility compared with uh, gel or fluid-filled catheters. And the reason for this is that pressure is actually recorded uh, directly at the source where this sensor is implanted. So this is at the end of the catheter. If you're recording arterial blood pressure, for instance, this part of this, uh, the catheter is implanted in the artery and you're recording the signal directly uh, via this, this small window here is, is how this, the, the pressure waveform is detected. With a gel or fluid-filled catheter, you're relying on the transmission of that, that pressure waveform along the catheter to a transducer that's located in the telemeter body. Uh, and that can introduce uh, effects of gravity, animal movement, uh, and obviously you run the risk of that catheter bending or, or a blood clot forming in that catheter, uh, causing you your signals to, to disappear. And all of that's removed with this uh, solid state technology from, from Miller, meaning that you can record really accurate um, uh, and uh, uh, precious waveforms with, with the car sciences rat pressure telemeters uh, over a really long period of time. Uh, you get an excellent frequency response uh, because you're recording directly at source. There's no need for the uh, uh, signal to be transmitted uh, through the, the gel or fluid as well. So meaning that you get an excellent frequency response, which is great for measuring uh, DPDT accurately from your left ventricular pressure waveform. And this also supports unique applications, particularly uh, intracranial pressure, ICP, which I'll talk a bit more in a bit more detail later. Uh, but this is a really low pressure waveform and can be really accurately captured with the rat pressure telemeters. There's been a lot of um, uh, talk and, and uh, concern from ethics committees and, and, uh, and bodies uh, in the past about uh, the need to singly house animals for telemetry experiments. Um, and this is overcome in the car sciences rat telemetry system uh, through the co-housing mode where you can implant two uh, uh, you can implant two rats with telemeters and house them in the same cage and record from both telemeters simultaneously uh, this really improves the welfare of the animals um, because rats after all are a social species so they like to be together uh, and and we've got uh, a number of customers that have reported uh, changes in the physiological data that they observe compared to, to singly housed animals when rats are housed together. Um, Co-housing mode also offers the, the possibility of customizing your experiments as well. So using the same feature, uh, two telemeters can actually be implanted in a large rat over 350 grams uh, to mix and match between any of the uh, rat telemeters available at the moment and measure up to four parameters. So that gives you the option of really maximizing the amount of data that you can collect from each animal as well. This video just shows uh, an example of, of co-housing mode in action. Uh, one of the rats is implanted with uh, uh, a blood pre uh, pressure and biopotential telemeter recording arterial blood pressure and ECG, and the other rat is implanted just with a single pressure telemeter. Uh, and you can see that these guys uh, are housed together and recording in real time into lab chart. Um, at the moment, there are seven uh, rat telemeters available. There's the single pressure telemeter, uh, dual pressure telemeter, a pressure biopotential telemeter, 
pressure sympathetic nerve activity telemeter, uh, single and dual biopotential telemeters, and a tissue oxygen telemeter. And I'll look at, we'll look in a little bit more detail about some applications of these telemeters uh, yeah, later on. So just to introduce the mouse telemetry system now, uh, traditional mouse telemetry uh, is limited by the size of the implant and, and therefore the size of the battery that can be included in the implant as well. A small battery means that you're limited in the amount of power delivered to the telemeter electronics, um, uh, meaning that recording time is restricted and also the sampling rate has to be kept relatively low as well as well as the cost of, of refurbishment and the, and the time that that takes up too. The Kaha Sciences solution is a battery-free telemeter uh, which receives continuous wireless power from the T-base to allow recording uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week at two kilohertz sampling rate. So this is great again for your long-term recordings and your detection of spontaneous events as well with continuous recording. Uh, at the moment, the mouse telemetry system is, is just offers a biopotential telemeter. Uh, and this is designed for subcutaneous implantation in mice uh, over 22 grams. Uh, it's designed and priced uh, for single use. So you implant it in the animal, it's really easy to use, and then you dispose of it at the end of your experiment. Uh, the T-Base is, is redesigned compared to the smart pad to, to deliver optimized wireless powering to the telemeter to ensure that the, um, the telemeter receives uh, wireless power uh, as much as, as possible. And, the, uh, and this allows you to record a uh, biopotential, so either ECG, EMG or EEG at 2 kilohertz. Alongside the biopotential, the T-base also allows you to measure uh, an index of activity as the mouse moves around the cage through the wireless power field, and also to detect whether data has been received by the T-base as well. Um, so you can see here, this is an example of a mouse uh, recording ECG um, as it moves around the cage. And the, the real benefit of the uh, of being able to record continuously means that, as I've said, you can track spontaneous um, activity. And an example of this here is an unfortunate event where a mouse implanted with a, an ECG telemeter uh, suffered uh, uh, a myocardial infarction as a result of the experiment that it was undergoing. Um, but what you can see is that you were able to track the development of the MI over the course of an entire day. So in the morning, uh, the ECG waveform was, was pretty normal. Um, there was some development a bit later on in the day in the evening, and then over a two hour period, the, the whole event was, was captured right up until the point of death. With a traditional mouse telemetry system, you wouldn't have been able to capture this data because you would have been restricted in the amount of recording that you could do. So you might have only taken an hour's recording sometime in the middle of the day where you would have seen this fairly normal EEG, ECG recording, and then the following morning you'd be presented with a dead mouse and you didn't know what happened. Whereas with this system, you're able to track it, capture all of this data and use that as part of your study uh, uh, for, for reporting that data as well. Um, in terms of long-term recording, you get really good uh, signal integrity um, as well. Uh, so this is an example of two ECG waveforms recorded from different mice 60 days after implantation with no filtering uh, to show that, that the signal integrity is really good and data quality is still there after that time. Um, and it's also possible to record longer than 60 days. This is an example, but, but it's certainly up to 90 days is possible, if not even longer. So the last part of the webinar, I'm going to talk through some applications of the telemetry system, uh, both the rat and the mouse system, and also highlight some, some publications from, from customers, um, which are pretty nice. So starting with cardiovascular physiology, um, the, the telemetry systems can be applied in studies of hypertension using the RAT um, blood pressure telemeter, single pressure telemeter, or the pressure biopotential telemeter to record arterial blood pressure and ECG. 
In studies of cardiac function and MI, you can use the RAT uh, pressure biopotential telemeter to record left ventricular pressure and ECG, uh, or the dual pressure telemeter to uh, measure left ventricular pressure and arterial blood pressure. Then you've also got the biopotential telemeters, so the, the RAT single biopotential telemeter and the mouse biopotential telemeter to record ECG too. Uh, and then finally, from, from a uh, cardiovascular physiology, um, this is a bit of a whistle stop tour, but uh, we, you can also carry out studies of cardiovascular control using the 56 SP uh, arterial pressure and sympathetic nerve activity telemeter to record uh, uh, arterial blood pressure from the descending aorta and renal sympathetic nerve activity as well. Uh, so this is looking at influences of the, the autonomic nervous system on blood pressure. And you can see in this example, this rat's implanted with uh, a 56 SP telemeter recording arterial blood pressure and a really nice, clean um, sympathetic nerve activity waveform, which is um, possible thanks to the two kilohertz sampling rate of the telemeters. Uh, and using lab chart as well, you, this is an integrated uh, uh, signal of that, that, un, uh, of that raw waveform there as well, showing that you can carry out real-time uh, data analysis too. And uh, a great example of, of this telemeter in use was published uh, in Nature at the start of this year by um, Jordan Square from the EPFL in Geneva in Switzerland and his collaborators at the University of Calgary in Canada. Uh, and they were using the, the 56 SP telemeter to measure arterial blood pressure and sympathetic nerve activity in uh, to monitor the hemodynamics of spinal cord injured rats. Um, and then looking at, at some uh, treatment protocols uh, using uh, some, some, some stimulation as well. And this is a really, really nice paper. Uh, uh, even besides the telemetry, telemetry, I'd really recommend that you go away and read it because it's a, a really interesting study. Um, but it really highlights the power of the telemetry system too. So they were recording uh, over a really long period of time. So they were recording up to 42 days uh, after their spinal cord injury. Um, and they were recording continuous data as well. So they were recording 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and the quality and stability of the data that they were able to capture with the telemeter allowed them to perform, uh, confidently perform or automated analysis as well. Uh, so a, a certain proportion of their data analysis was carried out um, uh, without human intervention. So they were recording into lab chart. Uh, exporting the data into another data analysis uh, software package and running this automated analysis. And they were confident to do that because of the quality of data that they were collecting with the telemetry system. They were also able to record uh, under a, a number of situations in their experimental protocol as well. So they were carrying out continuous recordings where they uh, were just monitoring in the home cage they were able to carry out and monitor hemodynamic uh, parameters during the spinal cord injury surgery as well. And then finally, they made some weekly assessments in this uh, negative pressure chamber as well. So recording away from the home cage for a period of time to, to look at the effects of, of this negative pressure chamber on hemodynamics and how the rats were responding to the uh, after the spinal cord injury. So this is a really excellent um, uh, example of, of the, the kind of data that you can collect with the telemetry system. So moving away from cardiovascular uh, pressures into talk more about the intracranial pressure that I mentioned earlier. So because the solid state pressure sensors are so accurate uh, and are able to record at, at really low pressure and uh, very sensitive to small changes in pressure as well. Uh, these, this makes them very suitable for recording intracranial pressure uh, in rats. Uh, the telemeter body is implanted in the abdomen, uh, abdominal cavity, as you can see here, and then using a 25 centimeter catheter, it's tunneled subcutaneously and can be implanted underneath the skull, um, either subdurally or epidurally. Um, and a great example of this in action uh, is from Sajeda Eftakari and her colleagues at the Danish Headache Centre in Copenhagen. So they were able to record um, 
uh, they were able to implant the pressure sensor epidurally and record a really, really nice, uh, really low pressure. You can see in this example, it's below five millimeters of mercury, uh, really nice waveform uh, that they were able to, to analyze and extract other components of it as well in this top uh, part of the figure here. Um, because the, the, uh, what the, the sensors also offer is, the, is really long-term stability as well. So as you can see uh, in the middle diagram, this is raw data or, or uh, mean from uh, a daily mean from 10 animals plotted over 50 days. And they were able to get pretty stable recordings from all of their telemeters with say for maybe one or two uh, days in a couple of animals where the, the uh, signal was a bit higher for some reason or lower. Um, but they were able to get really stable recordings for, for 50 days from, from their animals. And that's exemplified by this, uh, the tight, how tight these error bars are down here in this final figure. Um, and what's nice about this study is that they were able to carry out, um, the experiment in different, uh, phases. So they had the recovery phase where they were looking at how ICP changed uh, immediately post-surgery. Um, and they show that it takes about nine to 10 days for, for ICP to stabilize after surgery. They then had a physiological phase where they were just interested to see how ICP uh, or the, the ICP recording in the home cage uh, without any experimental uh, um, intervention. Uh, and they were carried this out for for a, a good three weeks. Uh, and then the final part of their experiment was, was carrying out some experimental in, interventions as well. So this is a really nice study and shows the, the quality of data that you can collect, uh, even at such low pressures and, and so stable over a long period of time as well. So some, some further applications of, of intracranial pressure would be in studies of stroke, uh, traumatic brain injury, migraine and intracranial hypertension, which is what the guys in uh, Copenhagen are interested in, and hydrocephalus as well. So to move on and talk about the uh, some more neuroscience specific applications of the telemetry system, and this is using the uh, single, the rat single and dual biopotential telemeters and the mouse biopotential telemeter as well. Uh, the continuous and long-term recording is, is really um, a nice feature uh, available for, for neuroscience studies. And the fact that you can sample at such a high sampling rate means that, that uh, the frequency bands that you would expect to see recorded in EEG or even um, uh, from deeper electrodes in the brain are, are really able to be captured by uh, the, the telemetry system. Unlike with a tethered system or a head-mounted system, uh, you see fewer movement artifacts because uh, all of the uh, uh, <clears throat> telemeter is internalized. There's nothing to bang against the side of the cage. So you get really nice signal quality. Um, and it's ideal for detection of spontaneous events like seizures during epilepsy studies and, and sleep as well. Um, and the rat telemeters, as I've mentioned, have the five meter transmission range to the smart pad. So you can take your rats away from the home cage and, and carry out studies uh, and experiments in mazes or fear conditioning as well. And a couple of examples of, of the uh, biopotential telemeters in action for, for neuroscience studies come from these epilepsy papers. Uh, one from Professor John Jeffries in, uh, from the University of Oxford in the UK, where he was using a dual biopotential telemeter to, to detect uh, seizure activity by uh, an EEG waveform and also ECG uh, to, to look at the effects of heart on heart rate uh, during and after uh, the seizure. And you can see that he was able to record for, for 50 days from the telemeters uh, and capture a really large number of seizure events, uh, each of which they were able to analyze uh, and look at the, the effects on heart rate during that, that's those seizures too. Um, the, other uh, figure on this slide uh, relates to, to this paper from uh, these researchers at the University of Utah in the US. Um, and again, they were using the single biopotential telemeter to record uh, EEG activity and, and monitor seizure activity in rats. Um, but they were able to record for even longer. So they had um, something like 
18 weeks recording from their telemeters. And they were able to uh, implant the telemeters right at the beginning, record some baseline pre uh, inducing epilepsy. Then they induced epilepsy in their animals, carried out a dosing regime, and then split their animals out into three experimental groups as well uh, for the final part of the experiment. So able to collect really um, lots of data from each animal uh, and uh, for, for really good um, statistical power. I mentioned uh, the tissue oxygen telemeter, and I haven't really got enough time to, to go into much detail about this today, but to, uh, apart from to say that it's a unique uh, means of monitoring chronic tissue oxygen from the kidney and the brain, uh, where it's been used so far. Um, and uh, it's been used by, by researchers uh, to look at circadian uh, variability in, in kidney uh, tissue oxygenation. Uh, in this cell metabolism paper down here, and also looking at um, uh, relating it to neuronal activity and looking at local ischemia in the brain as well. And then finally, um, I just want to highlight the, the application of co-housing mode by implanting two telemeters in one rat. Uh, so these guys at the University of Auckland uh, in New Zealand in Fiona McBride's group uh, implant the dual pressure um, telemeter and the 57Y tissue oxygen telemeter in a, in a rat model of stroke. And this allows them to record arterial blood pressure, intracranial pressure, and uh, brain tissue oxygen in their stroke model. So this is a really highly customized experiment uh, specific to, to what they want to do. And using the co-housing mode to implant these telemeters in, in one rat, uh, large rat, um, is allowing them to collect as much data as they possibly can to, to extract as much information from the rats uh, and, and what's going on during the, the, their stroke model. So you can make unique combinations of uh, physiological parameters. And as I say, to really maximize the use of each animal uh, and to get some really interesting data. Uh, and again, these are really interesting papers to go and read um, about the, uh, the um, uh, blood pressure uh, after stroke in rats and, and some therapeutic approaches as well. Um, and really, uh, again, showcasing uh, the use of the telemetry system. So just to, to sum up, um, the wireless power system of the car sciences telemetry system removes the experimental limitation of battery life um, and supports really long term and continuous recording. Uh, the 40 independent transmission frequencies mean that its systems are really easy to use uh, and there's no interference between animals. And you're sampling with a 2 kilohertz sampling rate, which is, which is really high for improved temporal resolution. The rat telemetry system incorporates the Miller microtip pressure sensor uh, for improved accuracy and expanded applications for pressure telemetry. And uh, the co-housing mode uh, improves the welfare of your animals, but also allows you to refine your experiments and, and extract as much data from your animals as you can. The mouse system is a battery-free telemeter, allowing that continuous and long-term data collection, which you can't get with other mouse telemetry systems, at a really high sampling rate as well. Uh, and finally, it's, it's single use, which makes it very easy to use. So thank you very much for, for listening and attending. Um, if you've got questions, uh, I'll answer some questions shortly, but uh, feel free to, to direct them to me at p.griffiths at adinstruments.com. And specific sales questions can go to, to the different uh, sales email addresses in the different regions. Uh, and for more information, there's loads more information available on the ADI website as well. Thank you. All right, thanks so much for that. I am just going to flip to our Q&A session. So uh, the first question here for you, Phil, is um, does the wireless charging of the implants cause the animals to heat up at all? 
Uh, yeah, it's, that's a good question, common question as well. Um, the the short answer is no. Um, the and we've got some data that we collected uh, a few years ago to to support that as well. Uh, but basically, the the wireless power technology is quite smart, uh, and the field generated by the the smart pad and the T base uh, is optimized based on feedback from the telemeter. Uh, so it. it the telemeters constantly measure the the temperature within the animal uh, to make sure that they don't overheat. Um, and if for any reason they are warming up, then they they are able to disable the the, the wireless power field as well. So there's there's a lot of uh, built-in kind of fail safes to make sure that that that, that doesn't happen. Okay, great. Um, and then a somewhat rel uh, related question here. Um, someone has asked. Does the telemetry systems um, do they measure temperature? So the the rat telemetry system does measure temperature. Yes, uh, the mouse system doesn't. Uh, the rat system works uh, that it measures temperature um, on a two hourly cycle. So you get an updated temperature measurement of the of the rat every two hours. Okay, great. Um, another great question here. This question is, when reusing the EEG slash biopotential units um, between different animals, can you address how or whether one can lengthen the lead wires if needed? Uh, the answer to that is, is that you can't at the moment. Um, it, so each time that you explant them, you'll have to trim the lead wire. Uh, a little bit, um, and the the best advice that that I can give to maximise use is to is to keep the amount that you have to trim those leads uh, to a minimum. Um, so you, for for EEG recording, you have to uh, to embed them in dental cement to to hold them in place. So so be quite sparing in using that dental cement so that you you trim as little as possible. The leads are quite long as well. So they're, I think off the top of my head, they're about 25 centimeters. So um, you should get a good few uses out of them before, um, uh, as long as you're careful as well, uh, before having to buy a new one. Great. All right, um, another really awesome question here. So this person has said, um, I work in respiratory neuroscience and I was curious if there were any applications regarding plethysmography methods. Currently we use a pit tag um, telemeter for temperature monitoring. Are there any applications for this telemetry regarding respiratory research? Um, that's a good question. Uh, in terms of plethysmography, uh, no, there's nothing that you, I don't think that you can do with these telemeters for, for, for that. Um, in terms of respiratory research, you could measure uh, diaphragm or um, intercostal EMG to look at uh, respiratory activity. Um, and you can also measure um, intrapleural pressure as well using the the um, uh, pressure telemeters but um, but yeah they're, they're the two two main applications that I can think of for respiratory research okay great um, another question here uh, in order to measure left ventricular pressure where do you need to secure the transmitter uh, so that the, the body of the telemeter would be implanted in the abdominal cavity uh, and then the catheter is uh, implanted in the left ventricle uh, via the apex of the heart so you go in through the diaphragm uh, there are webinar uh, there's a <clears throat> my colleague or ex-colleague sarah jane uh, um, presented a webinar on on the surgery approaches and in recording left ventricular pressure which is available on the ADI website and there are surgical videos on the ADI website as well showing the um, the surgical approach for implanting for LVP great um, I've got a couple more questions here this is just a quick reminder to uh, send questions that you have for Phil and we'll try to get to them in the next couple minutes um, so this 
question here is, can blood pressure and cerebral spinal fluid at the lumbar level be recorded simultaneously? Sorry, so they want to record blood pressure and... And cerebral spinal fluid, probably pressure as well pressure. at the lumbar level. Okay, uh, I'm not aware that anybody's measured um, CSF pressure in the spinal cord. Um, it, it's possible. Um, it just depends on, on the size of the um, sensor uh, relative to the, the kind of space that you can put it in without causing too much damage to the spinal cord, I think. Um, so because it's a two French uh, sensor, which is 0.6 millimeters um, in beneath the, the skull, there's plenty of room for that to to to, um, to be positioned uh, in the spinal cord. It's or in the around the spinal cord. It's certainly possible, I think, but but it would just be a bit of a tight squeeze, I think. Okay, so back to the Q and A. Um, our next question here is, um, is there a co-housing possibility for the mouse system? Uh, unfortunately not uh, at the moment. The mouse system, uh, uh, yeah, the mouse system can't work with co-housing. So the only option for, for, for that is to uh, have a, an unimplanted cage mate in, in there with the, uh, with the implanted mouse. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. And then this next question is kind of related. Um, is there a plan to scale up the mouse system to record multiple biopotentials and or the core temperature? Uh, I don't know the answer to that at the moment, unfortunately. Um, it's certainly a question that, that people have asked uh, of me previously about recording uh, a couple of biopotentials uh, from the mouse system. So, um, yeah, uh, at the moment, I, I don't think there are plans to do that, but uh, something might happen in the future, perhaps. All right. And in the interest of time, I'm going to make this the last question. Um, this question is, is there anyone you could recommend with experience placing sensors in the rat pulmonary artery? I'm assuming pressure. Uh, yeah, I guess that's for pressure. Um, I don't know anybody off the top of my head that does that. Um, but it's, if the person wants to contact me, then we can discuss it in a bit more detail. I think, um, rather than addressing that now, I don't think we've quite got enough time to talk about that now. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, just a reminder, if you do have questions for Phil, his email is right here up on the screen. Um, and those links uh, are clickable, so that will open an email right to um, Phil or to the ADI uh, sales teams. Um, so thank you so much, Phil, for your presentation and your insights during the Q&A. Uh, it was really a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Um, in closing, thank you again for taking part in this Inside Scientific webinar sponsored by AD Instruments, and we look forward to having you with us again soon.